You're listening to the No Schedule Man podcast with Kevin Bomer, exploring real stories and lessons learned with a variety of special guests. To learn more about Kevin and to access other episodes of the podcast, please visit NoScheduleman.com and connect and contribute at No Schedule Man on Twitter or Instagram and on Facebook, YouTube, and SoundCloud, all backslash No Schedule Man. Thanks for listening and enjoy the No Schedule Man podcast. Hey, I'm Kevin Bolmer. Thanks so much for joining me. Since the last episode with speaker Sarah Westbrook a couple of weeks ago, been able to get some more stuff out there for you. Hope that you'll take a couple of minutes and have a look. There are a couple of new articles up on Choose Hope livebetter.com. You might like that site if you're into personal development at all and want to share some positive ideas. There's an article there called Change Your Words, Change Your Life. I've had a great response to that. And a pretty new one called Getting Back to the Present, The Future is Now. I chronicle a little bit of my own experience there and I'm hoping that you'll be able to relate and take something from that. Give those a look and let me know what you think. A couple new videos on the YouTube channel including One Word to Eliminate Right Now to Get Yourself in a More Positive State. See if you agree with that. And another one where I talked about here versus there, getting back into the present moment but still moving toward the future. That was something that was sparked the inspiration came from the conversation with Sarah Westbrook, which I thought was a fantastic podcast because of what Sarah brought to it. I encourage you to go back and have a listen to that. Continuing to chug right along with my rock band bucket list project and trying to use the law of attraction, throw that into action to be able to achieve my dream of recording and then performing a group of my own rock songs. I've got one of the song demos up there now. The song is called B Flat. I also wrote an article about one of the songs that will be a part of that project, uh, a tune called Battleship Chains. Do you know it? One of my favorite um, one of my favorite bands, Volbeat, just covered that song. It's an old tune by a group called Georgia Satellites. Anyway, that project is called Mutineer. You can find out more about it at mutineerband.com. Speaking of Volbeat, since I talked to you last on the podcast anyway... Went to see Volbeat. They're a rock band from Denmark. My boys and I love them. We went and saw them in Detroit, and both my kids got on stage with them. That was the third time for my oldest son, Eddie. He's been to see them three different times in three different cities and has been on stage with them at the end all three times. For my 10-year-old, Jaden, this was the first occasion for him. And so I think Volbeat, they're smart. They're smart. They've cemented their relationship with a couple of young fans. They do that at every show. I think it's a... Uh, I think it's a great idea. Anyway, what else is, is going on here in the world of Kevin Bulmer? Working on a keynote speech and also a little mini e-course to launch soon, along with a relaunch of my email newsletter. I'll let you know about that, hopefully by the next podcast. I've got a bunch more little video ideas ready to go, and some more great podcast guests lined up. I'm excited as this thing is starting to gain steam, and I would love to hear from you. Also, this is fun, getting ready for a week away with my sweetheart, who is taking me with her kids to Walt Disney World in Florida. That's exciting. I'm looking forward to that, and I'm hoping that I can maybe get a little bit of video and some photos of that as well. We'll see what happens. So, lots going on, and lots more exciting stuff ahead. And just a reminder, before we get into today's conversation, you can find and subscribe this podcast, or subscribe to this podcast, on iTunes, on YouTube, and on SoundCloud. And if you feel like leaving us a comment or rating or reviewing it, I'd really appreciate that. It would be a, a big help, uh, and so thank you in advance for that. Now, as for today's guest on the No Schedule Man podcast, I'm really excited about this one. I first found him on YouTube. Earlier this year, I typed in the phrase, Beginner Yoga for Men, and I found the channel of a guy named Sean Vig. Sean spells his first name S-E-A-N. Vig is, with a V as in Victor, <laughs> as in Vig. V-I-G-U-E, Sean Vig. Well, I watched a couple of his videos. I instantly liked him. And like some of the other people that I've talked to in the podcast previously, like Kevin O'Hara of AlcoholMastery.com and Jason Stevenson of Relax Me Online and MeditationMasters.tv, like them, Sean has become a very consistent voice in my world and a valued and appreciated resource in my journey of improved lifestyle. Now, I started by learning some basic yoga moves from Sean and some stretches from him as well. 
but I've learned and applied much more from him than just that. And we talk a little bit about that in this conversation. Let me give you a little bit of, uh, of a background about Sean V. He is <laughs> the most watched online yoga and Pilates guy. So the most watched certainly on YouTube, which probably makes him the most watched in the world. He was recently named one of the top 50 workout brands by the Huffington Post. Sean is a six-time best-selling author, including his book Power Yoga for Athletes and several best-selling e-books, which include Pilates for Men and Sean Vig's 30-Day Beginner Program. His incredibly popular YouTube channel, which is where I first found him, as I just mentioned, it serves well over 80,000 people, and he's and that's just people that have subscribed. I'm sure there are lots of other people that see his videos that might not be in that subscriber count. So it's probably bigger than that. He's also got a terrific fitness app, which you can download in the App Store for iPhone and on Google Play for Android. Now, in this conversation, Sean gives us a detailed look at his journey to how he got to where he is today and what are some of the events in his life that have shaped and steered that path. Now, I geared my questions to Sean more toward who he is as opposed to what he does. In other words, if you're interested in the how-tos or the benefits of things like yoga, Pilates, and other exercises, Sean has thousands of hours of free content available to you. Just go to seanvigfitness.com to get started. And again, Sean is spelled S-E-A-N, and Vig is V as in Victor, I-G-U-E as in Edward. Some terrific insights came from the chat with Sean, including his idea of lifestyle over motivation. So when you're thinking about the things that contribute to your experience, Sean thinks that when it's something that's ingrained, something that you have to do, something for your own well-being, that if fitness or diet or a number of other things that we talk about isn't even something that you need motivation, you don't need to be pushed to do it, you don't feel like you should be doing or not doing something and need to be constantly motivated, it's part of your lifestyle. It's like breathing and eating. It just becomes part of, of who you are. That's where some magical stuff really happens. I really like that idea, the idea of lifestyle more so than motivation. You'll hear him talk about that. Sean also talks about getting out there and get going. This comes up a lot in these podcast conversations. He talked about every moment that you don't get going or just sit and wait for the time to be right, it's another moment lost and another opportunity for you to have grown that's now gone by. So you're delaying that development a little bit more and a little bit more. So stop listening to your excuses if you really want to move forward and just get out there. You'll learn. And third, this is an exact quote from Sean from this podcast. Quote, nothing is stopping you from going further than your own limitations. You'll hear that quote in this chat along with the context around it. And I believe Sean says that uh, in this conversation, that was the first time he ever said that. Listen for it. See if you can catch it. What a cool thing it was to get to talk to Sean. I was not at all surprised that chatting with him felt like just sitting down with an old friend. Consider him another good soul and an incredible resource as we all continue on our journeys of health, happiness, and fulfillment. I hope he can help you and entertain you as he has done for, for me as well. I can't help but smile when I read his Twitter description. As of today, it says, quote, the most watched yoga Pilates guy on the planet, best-selling author, opera singer, fitness freak, living in the mountains. Now, who wouldn't want to talk to a guy like that? You're going to love him. Here's my conversation with Sean Vig on the No Schedule Man podcast. Sean, I watched one of your recent videos. I was really interested to hear you say that your deepest fear is that you'll run out of things to say or that what, you'll, what you are saying won't be interesting anymore. The thing that I automatically thought of when I heard that was, how about from your perspective and how when you are generating as much content as you are on fitness, how you keep it fresh and interesting for yourself? Ah, very good question. Um, well, you know, the videos are really a godsend to me because they force me, they really do force me to present something unique each and every time. And, uh, you know, in my videos, I'm working out right with you. So it, it uh, yeah, it definitely makes me 
delve into the the craft a little bit more, to cross train a little bit more, and to um, study, yeah, study up a lot on on the workouts, whether it's watching videos or reading books or just taking time to go to the gym and like the mat room and and work on new moves and new sequences. But it is very true. I mean, I've been doing this videos about seven seven years now. I've been teaching fitness over ten years. So it's, it is something in the back of my mind a lot, but it keeps uh, powering me forward that I don't want to become mundane. I don't want the spark to go. I don't want the flame to die. And I know that people who work out with me would notice that right away. If I did, if I kind of sat back a little bit and just coasted and kept doing the same things over and over, but it's always been in my nature to keep creating, to keep breaking out and trying new things. So the videos and teaching live classes are so good for that because they discipline me to stay, you know, current and to keep challenging myself and the people that are working out with me. Do you think that you've built that muscle so that it's almost kind of an automatic curiosity in yes. terms of always challenging yourself because you've got it from two angles, I think. Wouldn't you, Sean, both for people like me that absorb and appreciate and act upon the content and the teaching that you're providing, but also from a personal level that there are, there's always something new to learn and that you're always driving for that, that next thing for yourself, let alone anyone you're teaching. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I just got a book it's, uh, entitled How to Think Like Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci. And I actually didn't know much about da Vinci. I'd heard about him before, but I've been reading it and I'm very happy because a lot of stuff I'm reading in that book are things that I'm already doing, that I've been doing for many, many years I mean, I think when you're five years old, your personality is kind of set. Someone was just telling me that, telling me that the other day. But in my own life, I'm always, um, I've always been like looking for more. I've always wanted to be creative. I always want to add things to my arsenal, whether it's uh, you know new exercises, writing a book, or learning a, a new language. I've always been very keen on that to keep my mind going. But absolutely, if uh, if the the business didn't fulfill me if I wasn't challenged by it, if I didn't like doing it anymore. As I said before, people would notice and I'd probably stop doing it. So I, I got to keep feeding myself. I mean, I did professional theater for over 10 years before I got into fitness. I was an actor, singer, did some dance, and, and that also prepared me. I mean, I traveled all over. I was always doing different shows. I was always working with different people. So I was very conditioned to always changing things up. Things would always change. I mean, so is life. So you're right. I, you know, I I feed myself creatively for myself, of course, but also it transfers onto people who work out with me. And uh, I like to stay sparked and in the moment with these ideas and always being creative. I'm interested in your thoughts, Sean. On you touched on a, a moment ago about um, when your personality is said to be set by about five years old or. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the last guest that I had talked about, you know, the ages from 7 to 12. And I guess this is subjective, and I, I, I certainly don't have the education to off, offer an informed opinion. But when you're young, so much of that foundation is set. H how do you feel about that, being somebody that is so genuinely curious? Like, for instance, I found you a couple of years ago. I'm 42 years old now, and I would suggest, Sean, that my life has changed more in the last five years or so than mm -hmm. at any other time in, in my year or, or in my life. Is that a challenge to that idea of how foundational those beginnings are? Or is that more of an affirmation of coming back to your true nature? Uh, yeah, yeah, these are, these are great questions because these are things I wrestle with and I, I pray on and I, I discuss with other people, these issues, y you know, I, since five years old, you know, I do look back, it's hard to kind of associate yourself now with your, per you know, how you were back then. You have some different perspectives on life. You have different experiences, maybe you have more baggage now, but I've always, I think, you know, since I was that age, the same things in life have always fired me up, have always really excited me. As we talk about being creative, being active. I love the idea of rolling out of bed in the morning and having kind of an adventure throughout the day. I like <laughs> working hard. Um, I like to interact with people. And, you know, you always think when you're lying in bed at night, you want to look back on the day and be very happy about it and very content with how the day went. But, Think I've done videos on this where my thoughts always they go back to how I thought 
you know, as a much younger person, 20, 30, because I'm 42 also. And when I was maybe five to 10 years old, what really excited me back then? And it was always movement. It was activity. It was exercise. It was, I like to learn. I like to read. Um, I like really positive things. I didn't like negative things. I had friends who were, you know, you find out later are pretty negative and we kind of split ways. So definitely, you know, do you, I always going back, I think we, a lot of us look backwards for, you know, our foundations, how we started out. And, and, uh, I was fortunate because I began with very positive foundations. When did you start to recognize, especially as you can recall now, Sean, cause it sounds like it was fairly early in life, but when did you start to recognize that awareness of negativity and wanting to choose to go a different route? You know, a, a few of my friends, I remember, I was talking about this with my parents the other day. As a younger kid, you don't you don't think as much about it. But I remember a few, you know, a couple friends of mine. We were friends, but you know, as the years go on, you kind of separate because you have different ideals about things. They kind of dwell on a lot of the negative things, or they're angry, or they're they've had some problems in their lives. And uh, I always I, I like very positive encounters. I liked, you know, being with friends and, and having a good time. I didn't want to, I wasn't a mean kid. I didn't like being around other kids who were really mean to just to be mean. And, you know, as, as the years go on, it kind of shapes. We're watching Stamp, you know, the movie Stand By Me? Yeah, absolutely. And that's, I think I was talking about my wife too, because there's four guys are 12 years old. And, and he talks about in the, in the movie, how they, you know, in a few years, they kind of, they separate until they're just, uh, some of them are just another face in the hallway at school. You know, you may have had some stuff in common then, but as your life goes on, you go in different directions. Um, I always think about a friend of mine. His name is Mike Fitzpatrick. He was a really good friend of mine younger, but he started to have some problems, and he actually he committed suicide, we found out, a number of years ago. I always think about that when we talk about something like this. We were really close, and we, we, you know, we grew apart as years went on. I didn't hear about him for probably like ten years, and then someone told me he was dead. And uh, I, I always think about that when we have these kind of discussions. It's interesting that I started by referencing. Interesting to me, anyway. <laughs> Somebody listening might disagree, Sean, but interesting to me the video that I referenced when we started our conversation, where you talked about your deepest fear. Uh, that mm -hmm. maybe we can come back to at some point. But that was the video that you did when you talked about the disappointment that you had about why the Sunrise Yoga video uh, had gone away. And people can go to seanveigfitness.com and visit your blog page to, to see that. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was really struck, not at all surprised, but struck by on this idea of choosing positivity. You laid out very clearly, I thought, Sean, your deep disappointment and personal hurt of the uh, the situation that uh, precipitated that video disappearing for a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. But then your choice in terms of, although you had felt violated and, and hurt, um, your choice of how you decided to kind of respond to that emotionally. Uh, mm -hmm. And that idea of letting go, I think, is almost kind of... Um, not an opposite for want of a better word, but here we're talking with somebody that helps make you strong, you know, but there's <laughs> an interest, interesting kind of a balance between strength and release, mm -hmm. letting go. Now I've just covered a whole lot of territory without giving some people some background if they're not familiar, but um, let's talk first about maybe just really quickly, what happened with the sunrise yoga video so that we can set this up? Well, sunrise yoga is a video I think I put it out. It's a, it's a few years old. It's a very popular video. It's always got a great response. Filmed with my old uh, flip camera. I, I had the flip before I, I use the GoPro now. Out in it was in Florida, and that was a few months ago. It's amazing how things they they take a precedent in your life, and they kind of drift into the background after a while. But um, I got an email one night from a lady. Well, I don't know, saying – it was really vague, I think, saying that, hey, your video has my music in it. Take it off. <laughs> I don't know what, you know. So that always – you have to do a follow-up, like, what are you talking about? Which video, blah, blah, because I get a lot of emails. Um, and she said that the music in the video was hers. And, uh, you know, I wrote back, and I was trying to get a clarification on what she was talking about. And before I could do anything, she had lodged a complaint with YouTube and, had, and actually had the video pulled 
from YouTube saying that it was her music in the video. It, it most certainly was not her music. I, I even sent her what I used in it because I created the music. Um, long story short is I had emailed her a couple times very nicely, you know, saying let's, you know, let's work this out and blah, 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 because that's what YouTube tells you to do is to go to the person who did it and, you know, communicate with them. And I never received anything back from her. But the nice thing was is I got to um, lodge a counter complaint, and that actually puts the ball in her court. And uh, eventually she let it go because that would um, – she would have to – I think lawyers would have to get involved and she'd have to prove it, which she could not because it was not her music. So she let it go, and that was that. But, you know, you were saying, you know, you, in my videos and in life, you, know, you want to be strong. But I also – I always talk about so much about the release because we hold on to things. And yeah. our first instinct as humans a lot is is emotional – and I always say, you know, watch out for the emotional because it will get you in so much trouble. You know, d your mouth can get you into more trouble than anything else in this life. And I, you know, I pulled back. I was upset. You know, I may have said a few things to my wife, you know, talking about it, not to her, but, you know, about it. And, you know, I said, well, in life, it's not – it's how you react to things. It's not really what you do. It's how you react because you're always re reacting. You're bouncing around like a ping pong ball all the time. And I mean, just go online. I don't, I hardly ever go online anymore. I, I do so much business online, but I stay off it because it just, it gets so crowded and so noisy. And if you read comments on things, all anyone does is insult each other. They just get into this wrestling match right away after like two or three sentences. They don't even know the person. So, you know, you play it cool and you do what you have to do and it turned out okay and I was I was very grateful for it. Um and I acknowledge in life you're going to have, you know, crap comes at you all the time. You know, there's no one's immune from bad things happening, from things getting stolen from them, from being violated, things like that. So, but it's how you handle it. It's how you react to it and um I was I was happy that's how I responded to it. And the video's back and it's um People are enjoying it once again, but having your own property stolen, that, that always stings. Thanks for, for going back over that, Sean, and I, I hope you don't mind me raking you back over those coals. No. But I, well, I think it's important for people to hear those things because in my view, another very common thought in our society, certainly here in North America, is to look at other people that we think are achieving and then just to assume that their grass is greener. Now, yeah. they may make their grass greener, which comes down to the choices of how you decide to respond or to react. Mm -hmm. uh, but more to the point of why I'm, I'm chasing this idea is everybody has their stuff, right? We, we all get things put in our path that we then have the choice to choose. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody gets a free ride. But what you do have is the opportunity to decide how you want to, to deal with it. And I thought it was a really great... Um, it was just really great that you opened up and you shared that for the people like me that, that come to you and, and, and look at you as an advisor on so many other very important parts of life. Mm -hmm. um, but to be able to just sort of, again, stress the, um, the importance of, to use your word, release and letting go. And then I th what were, was it that you just said that um, funny because now all of a sudden that seemed like such a big deal, but it had just kind of faded into the background. Interesting yeah. how that happens with stuff, isn't it? I say it a lot. You know, we, I, I think I talk, you know, vid the videos are fan and, and my classes, if you ever attend one of my live classes, they're just like my videos. I talk, interact with people. They're a great way for me to work through stuff uh, in a video because once I'm moving, I mean, I can sit and chat for a long time, but something about the moving is such a catalyst for bringing out all these thoughts and bringing out answers to questions you may not even have sometimes. So when I'm filming and I'm going through a workout, these things really clarify. They crystallize in my head. And I'm like, well, you know, everyone who's watching this works out with me. We train together, so I'm going to share it. And the video about the Sunrise Yoga was a great way for me to, to discuss it because I was getting a lot of emails about that video. I've never gotten emails that many about one video before, you know, every day getting – about every hour getting many, many, many. And so I wanted to, to put it out there for people. And also you tie it in to the brand with Sean Vig Fitness about, you know, let's let let's work through it. Let's breathe. Let's take a deep breath. Let's not yeah. overreact. Because as I said, you know, the emotion, oh, you, emotion feels so right in the moment, but it will you'll look back and you think, why did I do that? Why would why did I send an angry email? Why did I get all mad? I think some people would put out videos um, talk about how angry they were and, and all that kind of stuff. And I would never want to do that. I don't want people to, 
to get angry. It's a it's a great way to react to something like that. And I, it was my bike being stolen in sixth grade. That was a feeling I had that popped into my head. And that was a kind of a unique story that I wanted to share with everybody. And that's available in that video. I'll, I'll post it with, with your blessing. If that's, oh, I mean, it's right up on your blog, of course, that uh, it's easy for people to go and see. Um, mm. I don't remember hearing a conclusion to the bike story, but maybe the fact that the bike was gone <laughs> and that was it was, was that Never the end of that story? Yeah, a lot of stories don't end. You know, it's just, that's how it goes. That's Your life. life stolen. In a movie, you may get it back with a big fanfare and, you know, dogs running towards you and, you know, everyone's happy. But in real life, your bike's gone. You know, they sold it somewhere. I got another bike. <laughs> it, it's that's good lessons. You know, as, as we both said, you know, in life, you know, crud comes along all the time. How do you react to it? Yeah, and almost, uh, what, three and a half decades later, um, you're doing all right. It. <laughs> Yeah, I had my old street machine. It makes a good story, and uh, yeah. <laughs> it was a fun night until the the bike was stolen. Yeah, but, uh, oh, I love the street machine. We could probably go down that rabbit hole, but let's not. I'm, I'm interested. Do you know it? Do you know that bike? That bike was something else. I you know what it did when you were talking about the street machine. I just started <laughs> thinking about you know those of us that maybe like name our cars and name our bikes or things like that. Um, and I had visions also of big wheels. Do you remember those? Yeah, they, they of weren't course. bikes, but if we're the same age, you might remember wrecking around the neighborhood on those kinds of things. Yeah, and, uh, the three wheelers. Yeah, yeah, and they had those I, those plastic wheels, and then you'd take those out onto the street, and after a little while, there'd be like just those sort of random holes in the way, and then they'd throw gravel up. And yep, mm-hmm. anyway, good memories. Let's so I think get, everybody has a story. You know, everyone can relate to something happening like that. You know, something being stolen, a beloved bike. So it's always good. And as, as I said, I love I love the opportunity to have a video to talk about it. That, w- that was a nice opportunity. Well, it impacted me, uh, as I mentioned. And um, I think it's something that's come up in other conversations, Sean, too, is um, being genuine and sharing with people. And I wonder if you might be interested to hear from me. Mm-hmm. I first found you by, I think, putting into, I can't remember whether it was Google or YouTube, but I guess they're own, the, one and the same, but it was... Yeah. Uh, beginner yoga for men, I think was the, the phrase that I typed in. And it's funny how y- you can be separated by geography and yet somebody's energy and genuineness, if I can use that word, can mm-hmm. still come across. And there have been a few other similar things that I've found people that I, I really look up to now uh, and have derived great benefit from in my own life by finding them online that, you know, you try some things on. I mean, you, I, here's a product and it's not that it's bad, but it doesn't necessarily resonate with me. But then all of a sudden you've got a personality match. And I remember really feeling like, um, I really like this guy. I feel like he's <laughs> his energy sort of matches my energy and I want to aspire to be more like that. And next thing I know, I'm paying attention to my breathing. I'm listening to classical music while I'm you know, ah. working. Yeah, see, so you can see that I'm <laughs> digging into more than just than just the others. But uh, no doubt, you you must have heard from a number of people over the course of the last seven years. You've been making videos with a similar story about you know you were able to connect with me, even though we're in different spots geographically. Mm-hmm. It feels like we're sharing kind of the same energy. How gratifying is that? Isn't that amazing? I have to stop and in videos, I like to talk about that sometimes, how uh, here I am in my driveway in Colorado, I'm up on top of a mountain filming, and I know that somebody um, over in Japan or somebody in Australia or in Russia is going to watch this and do it with me whenever they want to do it. And it's a common bond, you know, movement is universal, Uh, anybody can do some kind of movement. And what I teach primarily is the body weight stuff. So I'm like, anywhere, anywhere, go in your room, go in your yard, go to a park, go at, you know, at work or in a hotel and do these workouts. So it's, uh, when I'm filming, I mean, I do, it, there's a feeling that there's people there with me, that we're all working out together. It's not, uh, hey, look at me, I'm going to work out now, you're going to watch. Some people may watch. Some people will say, hey, I am ate a pizza while I, while I watch this. You know? <laughs> but um, it is a wonderful thing. And you know, when I first started off, like anything, you, know, you start off filming, you think, well, you know, how, how do I do this? And you say, well, I love 
fitness. I love moving. I like the camera because I was in theater for so long. And I used to do home videos, hundreds of hours of home videos by myself and with my friends growing up. Um, I love these surroundings. Um, I, I like everything about this. So I'll just hit record and go. I never think about what I do. It's it's um, in the moment. It's honest. Once once in a while, you know, you film and you think, ah, I'm just not feeling it. But that hasn't happened in a few years. Sometimes that would come along. Like ah, I'm just I'm feeling a little lost here. But uh, you know, you don't think too much about it. You love what you're doing, and you want to pass that on to anybody that's training with you and anywhere around the world. It's pretty amazing this technology. I love um, I, I love when you get interrupted by. By the dog. Oh. I just, well, but see, here's what I think is really interesting, Sean, is it's almost a reversal of what I perceive that we were taught, that everything <laughs> has to be packaged and perfect uh, before yeah. you can show it to somebody. And there's room for that, too, of course. Mm -hmm. But I think if I can speak from my own experience, I'll offer this in case anyone else has had uh, a similar uh, a similar thought pattern. And I can use the podcast as an example. My background is in broadcasting, Sean. I've thought about doing a podcast for a couple of years and just kept listening to all the excuses in my mind of why I, 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 I wouldn't or couldn't or shouldn't before finally just, ah, we'll just, we'll jump into the pool and then we'll, you know, we'll figure out <laughs> how we're going to stay afloat after yeah. that. And now here I am talking to you, but the fact that you could go and I also love when you're doing the videos and you're you're basically narrating your own motions and actions and then commenting on things that you didn't notice while you were in the moment, but, Oh, you know, I see this is there. It's, I guess on one hand, you could say it's imperfect. On the other hand, it's, it's a lot more genuine. Mm -hmm. And I, I wonder if because of that, it isn't a lot more relatable to people, you know, like you described of all, all points around the world that can say, you know what, that's, he's having a genuine experience. I can relate to that. I'm going to follow him. Yeah, I was, you know, I was thinking a little, it's like controlled chaos. <laughs> uh, you know, there's a little bit there, but I, you know, I, I write out these workouts on note cards. I have thousands of these little note cards. And I always, I, I've always been this way. It's like I kind of plan, but I want a whole lot of spontaneity in it too. I want it to be real. I want it to be a learning experience in the moment. And I want it, you know, I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. And these, you know, as we go through these things, things are going to happen. And if you're going to film outside, you know, I live in, in the wilderness here in the mountains. Kind of, There's bears, there's elk, there's deer, there's fox, chipmunks. You leave it open to a lot of spontaneity just with your surroundings <laughs> as well. And I love that. And I, like, I love that when Addie's with me, sometimes she'll come over and say hi because how many people work out with their dogs? How many people work out with their cats? How things happen? It's relatable. We all – and it's, it's exciting to me. Because at the end of the day, I mean, we get a good workout, but you want to have a, as you said, genuinely exciting and passionate time about it. I'm all for, you know, anytime you do anything, do it with everything, you know, do it with your whole heart. Because if you don't, you start drifting back and it becomes a chore and fitness becomes a chore. And I don't want to do that. And not saying I don't do that. I mean, I still, every day you have to fight these negative things that fly through your brain. But again, how do you respond to it? But yeah, I, I like that. That's that's the goal I have. Once in a while, I'll get a comment, and it hardly ever happens, which is very nice. But you know, someone will give me a critique on how I film or how I talk, and I always thank them. I say, you know, this is who I am. This is how I do it. That's it. You know, I didn't learn this. This is how I do it because I'm passionate about it. And uh, it's uh, it, it, as we said before. You know, you got you got to be pleased with what you're doing before you can pass it on. So. I, it, a story just popped into my mind. Let me see if I can make it really quick. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when I was in my, I would have been my, my mid to late 20s. And my nephew, who would have been in his teens at the time, uh, came knocking on the door. And he and his buddy asked me if I wanted to come out and play basketball. And I'd played a lot of basketball when I was going through school, but had gotten away from it. It had probably been about 10 years or so. And I thought, well, that, sure. But it wasn't something that I would have just gone out and done, say, on my own on a Sunday afternoon. And my very first inclination, Sean, was to grab my car keys because we, of course, were going to pile into the car and drive to the park. Uh huh. And I, I said to him, just hang on a second, Kyle. I'm just going to grab my keys. And then came back and, I'm, and, and he's standing there in the, the door frame <laughs> looking at me like I had three heads. And 
what are you doing, Kev? Well, we're going to jump in the car, aren't we? And he just, well, we can just dribble the basketball. It's just, you know, like three blocks. We'll just go over to the school. What in the world do you need the car for? And it was a, it was a, a lightning bolt moment for me of going, oh, man, like I've just completely, <laughs> I've completely lost touch with this, the whole idea of let's go out and do it. And so with that yeah. story in mind, I'm thinking about videos I've seen of you, for instance, with nothing but the mat out in your driveway, partway through the routine, the dog is going by. Next thing you know, it's snowing near a blizzard. And I'm just <laughs> thinking about in a roundabout way how many of us think, okay, now we're going to start a new part of life. But at first I got to go and I've got to get the right fitness outfit. I got to get mm-hmm. the bag. Got to go get the membership and the fancy lock and then all the... And it's, no, if you want to be a certain way, if you want to do a certain thing, just go and start doing it. <laughs> Stop. It's, it's right there in front of you. Exactly. Yeah. It's right there. I I can't make it more accessible. I, I taught in, you know, when I lived in Orlando, Florida area, I taught for Walt Disney World for about eight years. I, I worked with their cast members. I went all over backstage. And, you know, you alleviate any excuse. I'm like, just you work. 10 feet away, get up, all your, walk down here. We're in the room right here. So, you know, they love that. It's so just bring your mat. All you need is a mat and some comfortable clothes. So it, it's true. Having this discussion with someone the other day that we talk about motivation compared to lifestyle. I don't use motivation as much anymore. It's like using the word happy as compared to joy. Happy is more temporary, I think. Joy is prevalent. It's always there. It's an undercurrent that powers you along. And, you know, motivation... I, I mean, yeah, I like it, but I look at lifestyle because, oh, I got to get motivated to work out as opposed to I have to work out. It's as important to me as breathing and and drinking water and, you know, the things that you have to have every day. So, you know, you, you get that. You make it the lifestyle. I love that term because eh, you don't make it seem like a chore. Lifestyle is a part of you and you, you have to do it every day. And when you don't do it, you f- you don't feel whole. I'm really interested to hear you say that, Sean, so that you know. Uh, I mean, I've gone to a gym for the last, I think it's been about 12 years I've been a member. Uh-huh. And I have kind of gone up and down. But are you in, my, you're in Toronto, Kevin? Near Lynn? there, about two hours from there, a little place called London, Ontario, which is about equidistant okay. between Toronto and, and Detroit. And I became more interested in how I felt than how I looked. Mm-hmm. And that's when I found you. And a funny thing started to happen. When I started working more on flexibility and... Uh, just more aerobic kind of stuff, movement as you've described, and less on resistance. Uh, not only did I start feeling better, lifestyle, uh, but I, I started looking better too. You know, <laughs> to the point mm-hmm. where people comment because they notice a change in energy. And I was by no means a miserable purple uh, person or an unfit person, but by focusing on the lifestyle, I'm going, you know what? I mean, I've already built the muscle, built the habit of going and investing some of my time and energy into fitness. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm just going to see if I can tweak the routine a little bit here so that I'm, I'm a little bit more interested in how I feel. I already dropped the little nugget there for you of um, classical music and some other things because you've got other videos there of that one was maybe five things that I do outside of fitness to, you know, to feel more fulfilled or yeah. something along those lines. But you grab these little tidbits and these little nuggets and then maybe that goes back to what you were talking about earlier when I asked how you keep the whole process fresh for you is that embracing that you're always evolving. There's always something new to learn. Stimulating. Exactly. That Da Vinci book captures it. It it, uh, solidifies a lot of the beliefs I've had for so long. And, you know, bottom line is, you know, I, I don't ever want to take myself that seriously. You know, I don't call myself a guru. I'm like, let's work out together. Um, and I, the last video I did, I was talking about, you know, you, you want to be full of that energy. You want to be, you know, the exercise works out a lot of the junk. You're positive because then you, you, you posit, you know, you have such a positive impact on the people around you, your community and, and your job, every, you know, your family, uh, it, it, it expands exponentially much further than just doing a push up or doing some squats. I mean, it's a catalyst for, for moving further into your life. And I always talk about service. You know, uh, if I sit on the couch all day, I don't move. I'm grumpy. I don't feel like going, hey, everything annoys me. If I'm moving and out and about, I want to talk to people. I want to work with people. I want to interact with people. Uh, it's, it's a great way to bring that out. I want to go back, Sean, and see if we can talk a little about some of uh, the journey and how this happened. 
Mm-hmm. So, for instance, you talked about being into theater and dance and singing. Was that were those indicative of the interests that you had as a child and a teenager? Was that kind of the um, the area that you thought you'd go into? Kind of, you know, theater was a um, more of a surprise because I it was a high school. Our band and choir, we went on a choir band trip from West Salem, Wisconsin, where I went to high school. You know, we all got in the bus and we went all the way to New York City. And I had been, never been in New York City. And we saw Les Miserables and Phantom, the two big shows on Broadway. And I, I always liked theater. I, you know, I, I grew up watching some of the musicals and stuff. But that really hit me, those two shows. See, even though we were in the way back row at the Imperial Theater and the Majestic Theater, we were way in the back. We were tired. We were hungry. I remember during Les Mis, I had to go to the bathroom. I had to pee really bad. And the whole first act is like two hours long. I couldn't stand it. But seeing those shows uh, on Broadway, I came back to my you know town in Wisconsin, which I love, and I my mind had kind of exploded. And with theater, you don't really know about what's the business going to be like live theater. You know, you don't really don't know much about it. And I went to university. I was going to be a history major. I always loved history, like American history, world history. I was going to do that. And I started doing theater. And then you, you get more immersed in it. And you realize there's a lot of people who make really good livings on this if you're 100%, you know, if you're well-trained in it. And out of, out of college, I started performing. I, I worked for over 10 years professionally. I joined the union uh, about halfway through. And that's what brought me down to Florida was one of the states where there's so much great professional theater, live theater, because it's a big retirement state also. And I worked all around Florida. I was in Europe. I was in New Jersey, Wichita. You know, it it brought me around. And I always loved fitness too. And let's face it, you know, theater is a lot of fitness. You, You have your instrument, you have your body, you have your voice. You're rehearsing constantly. I did summer theaters like up in Montana, summer theater, where you're doing four shows in repertory. So a different one each night all summer. So you got to take, you know, take good care of yourself. Even if you're 20, early twenties, which when I started off, you still start getting the bumps along the way. You feel mortal a lot. You know, you get the bumps and the bruises or your voice is tired. You got to go and sing. Um, I don't know where I'm going with this, but that's where I, the spark also with fitness. I was always, there was always a few of us in each cast that loved to go to the gym or loved to go jogging or, you know, uh, getting warmed up before the show, as opposed to a lot of them who would just take it for granted. And then after a few years, they, they start, it started showing, they weren't taking it that seriously with their bodies in, you know, in theater. What was it about just to bring you back a couple minutes from where you were when Mm -hmm. you went to see Les Mis and then you're back at home in Wisconsin after that theater experience in New York, the term that you used was that your mind had exploded. What, 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 what was it? I, you know, I chase moments like that. I'm a, I'm a mind exploding chaser. We'll put that on a workout shirt. Um, <laughs> um, what you know, was I, it though about that that made your mind explode? Um, well, one thing being in New York City, I, mean, I grew up in Southern California. I grew up on a beach out there, but New York City is so compact. It's so big and it, it's so classic. And you're walking through Times Square and the smells of the city and getting run over by the cab drivers, you know, and then, and then going to these theaters and seeing these shows, um, it did. It, it it really put together a lot of the things I had been yearning for. Um, I had done some theater a little bit here and there. As I said, I liked some of the movie musicals. I grew up watching like Oklahoma and Music Man. My first crush was Shirley Jones in The Music Man. Uh, so it, it was always in my mind. But the professionalism, the voices of these performers, the diction, the presentation, the lighting, the drama, how you can take. And this is what this is what this is the thing, Kevin, that ties in with with the fitness world is that how you take that one stage in theater and you create an entire world, this entire, you know, world with depth and feeling and power and emotion and levels. And that trend, you know, that's what always attracted me to fitness too. It's like put down your mat and you create this entire workout, this entire world right there. I mean, nothing is stopping you from going further than your own limitations. That's that's really really neat, and it's that's uh, pretty. I have not said that before. That's why I love you know talking about these things because it brings out like, wait a minute, yes, now I remember. Well, you know, these deep seated little nuggets that sit there and they inform you, and you don't even realize it a lot. And all of a sudden, yes, that's it right there. <laughs> I think my dad said when I came back, 
he goes, yeah, I noticed a change in you when you came back from New York. The whole, ex I mean, there's a whole experience of being there. Um, that you start, okay, because you know, you what direction? Where, where do I want to take this? My life, you know, I love all these things. I, I love these kind of things, but I don't know how to put them all together into something cohesive. Where do I go with this? And theater was uh, definitely a fit. I mean, I still love it. Still love it. Well, it, it clearly sounds as if it was really good to you and you to it for a good long time. And it took you mm -hmm. uh, around to see a lot of different places and have some great experiences. So how then did it evolve into your life getting maybe away from theater in terms of a more full-time activity and more into fitness? How did that process evolve? Ten, ten years, I, I've, you know, in my own life experience, 10 years is when I start going, huh, I wonder what else. <laughs> what, what else is out there? You know, what's out there for me? Uh, so I, I did theater a little over 10 years. If you include college, a little bit longer because I was a you know, theater major, vocal performance minor. I did a lot of singing, a lot of opera. And you start, you know, the way I am and the way you are too, it sounds, Kevin, is you start, well, what, what else is out there? You know, I want to I wanna expand. I want to try some different things. And um, I actually looked into – I got accepted at seminary. Um, seminary in Gettysburg, uh, Pennsylvania, which I love going there because of the whole battlefields and everything. And I was looking at that and I decided it's like, no, it's not the right time for that. And I kind of kicked around for a bit. It was kind of a neat time in between theater and fitness. I was still kind of doing a little bit of each, but I worked for a, a big land developer in Florida. I worked in model homes, giving tours. I taught English for Berlitz. I even went to Germany for a while and taught English. And uh, tried a few other things, you know, kind of kicking around. And then uh, I was certified as a personal trainer. And I, I did that a little bit. And then I started taking live classes like Pilates and yoga. And, uh, you know, as an actor, the whole, the big presentational side of it was a, was intriguing. And I liked the movement. I loved how the exercises made, we, made me feel as we talked about the feeling behind them. And, uh, you know, just steamrolls. And uh, you get certified and you get out there right away. You know, I mentor a lot of people and I always, the first thing I say is get out there, start teaching, start filming, just do it. Don't question everything. Just do it because you're just wasting time. And the more time you, you stay away from it, you're not going to do it. You're going to talk yourself right out of it. So I started teaching and, and uh, I got in with Disney World, which was huge. I taught over at Team Disney. And uh, the power of networking and always having a good positive product is that people came to the class and they said, hey, we'd like to have you also teach over here in Animal Kingdom at cast services or come to Team Disney or feature animation and then just start teaching. I, I taught like 20 to 25 classes a week for a while. Ugh, that was crazy. How, that was crazy. <laughs> how did it translate into starting the videos and – seeding what has become what we we can see online from you today well you know you get so com that's the thing you know i was teaching i loved it but i'm like oh man i'm getting burned out you know you, that's the way i am i was the same way in theater you know the you you get so um so in, excited by it that you just jump into everything like yeah i'll teach there i'll teach there i'll teach there you know businesses hospitals schools and um you cut your teeth, you know, in front of all these people working with all different kinds of people, ages and, you know, fitness levels. So I always am so in debt. I'm going to call him actually later today, my best friend, um, Stefan, who I grew up with in Wisconsin. And he's a tech guy. And uh, he's one of my, you know, guinea pigs that we used to do home videos together. Uh, you know, when I was younger, you, you know, you, you, with your friends, they you do a sleepover and like, hey, let's film out in the yard. We always do like talk shows that would eventually turn into us like punching each other. You know, that, that's what guys do <laughs> and running around. But um, he, you know, he had a technical know-how that I, I didn't really know. I had a computer for email, but he said, you know, MacBook Pro and a flip camera. And, uh, you know, it's like, well, of course. And that was the next evolution because when I first thought about videos, you know, you in light of greater knowledge, I just thought, well, obviously I have to get a studio or I have to contact one of the big, you know, companies that do DVDs and I have to work through them. It's like, no, this is a new age. This is a new time. Everybody has access to a camera. Everybody can create something. So that was 2009. And, you know, the first video I did felt 
perfectly fine. I, you know, I had been around the camera so much in my past and in theater that I went out to this park in the town I lived in in Florida and I filmed a Pilates video. I think I called it like Pilates Thunder number one. And, <laughs> and it was after all the teaching, Kevin, you know, and you're so comfortable with it. It was no problem at all. I had no problem. It's always a little weird, you know, that you're taking that video and you're launching it into the stratosphere and that now people that you don't know and you're not looking at directly are going to be looking at it. And you always think, well, what if they leave bad comments? Well, you know, that's how it's going to go <laughs> when you start. But um, that's where that began. And then that opens up so much more, so much more. Whew. Yeah. What was the um... – Gosh, you look at it now and you just see so much. I mean, all of the the Amazon best selling books, the accolades, the most watched fitness uh, guy in YouTube, um, the fully built out site, the app. Uh, but all of these things had to come into being one at a time. Um, mm-hmm. So, <laughs> which was the chicken and which was the egg? I guess we don't know which came first. But for instance, SeanVigFitness dot com was that there before you started doing the YouTube videos? No, no, I had a. A friend of mine in Florida, she she nicknamed me Mr. Fitness, and I thought that was cute. So her husband actually uh, built a little website for me at like Mr. Dash Fitness dot org. I think it's gone now, you know, because you know it's you always think, well, what's the natural chain of events? Okay, I'm, do I get a website? You know, uh, Facebook. A lot of these things were very new, you know, at the time. You know, if my MySpace was around at first, I think I used MySpace. And I, I haven't been on MySpace in like six or seven years probably. Yeah. But, you know, it is a progression. As I said, it's, it's kind of controlled chaos. It's a lot of chaos. It's, and I think if you speak to anybody who does online fitness videos, and, and we all talk. I mean, if I, I know most of the people out there that you probably also work out with. We, we talk a lot. We do collaborations. We email, stuff like that. But it's a lot of uh, trial and error. And I, I tell people, look, I, I don't have all the answers Things have worked, things haven't worked, but I've tried almost everything because it was so much fun. I've gone down rabbit holes. I've had things that at first sound were like, well, that's not going to work. Then later on it comes back I'm like, oh, that's a really good idea, like an app. A friend of mine mentioned or people said, how about an app years ago? And I looked at I'm like, oh, man, that's too much. That's too involved. That's too expensive. And then uh, like last year it was just great timing. Something came along and I launched an app. So never discard anything. You know, always keep digging. Um keep striving, keep learning new things about the business because you never know what you're going to use later on. I'm just smiling hearing you mention about the app because, (laughs) well, I I talked to you a few moments ago about um, um, having been going to the same gym for so many years and then changing things up. And it was early, it was this late winter, early this, this past calendar year where I started bringing my cell phone, you know, upstairs with me. And Mm -hmm. so you know, Sean Vig's voice is sort of coming, you know, off the floor and out of the atmosphere. I remember people that I don't necessarily <laughs> know, but recognize me that could tell something was different. Like, what is he watching? Like, why is he stretching and he's trying to watch a, a video at the same time? <laughs> at the uh-huh. same time? Why do you just constantly, and I'm guessing at what they were thinking, but I had the app and, you know, at first when you're trying to learn something new, you know, you're not sure you're doing it right. So you're trying to do it and then look over and, and, watch how you're doing it and wind it back. And um, and I remember being a little bit self-conscious about it at first, Sean, by having my phone with me there. And then I decided I didn't care because like you've said a few times, I was I was having too much fun. But oh, yeah. uh, once, it, once it becomes the norm, it, eh, yeah, then it's it's people who aren't doing it that feel weird. That, yeah. They seem weird. Why aren't you doing this? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Where did the first book come in? Uh, the first book was Power Yoga for Athletes. That's actually my paperback. That, that's a cool story because um, a lot of people think that that was my idea, that I created the book and then I, I got a publisher, but it was actually the reverse. I had never really entertained writing a book and the publisher, Fairwinds Press, contacted me because they had an idea for a book, Yoga for Athletes, Power Yoga for Athletes. And um, I always say this is a great reason to keep putting content out there because they were looking for an author. So they started doing searches online, Google, Bing, wherever, on YouTube. And my name and my videos kept popping up whenever they type in yoga or <clears throat> yoga for athletes, power yoga. So they contacted me. And uh, 
I remember I was in the parking lot at uh, Disney University getting ready to go in to teach a Pilates class, and I got the email, and that was, you know, saying they wanted to talk to me about perhaps writing a book. And, you know, right away, you know, you have those doubts, like, I don't know, but it was really exciting because I, I never fancy myself much of an author. I still don't, but, you know, when you write about technical stuff like fitness, I'm okay. <laughs> so what was the process like then? How did you attack it? Well, what's so cool is, you know, they're up in Boston. They're up near Boston, Massachusetts. I was down in Florida, <clears throat> and then we moved here to Colorado. So, you know, you um, you have a lot of conversations. You flesh out ideas, chapters. You want to make it... Um, you know, uh, kind of my style, very informative, fun, and also unique because the market is very saturated with fitness books, especially yoga. Yoga is a huge one. There's so many yoga books out there. And it's nice because, um, you know, I write on my computer and then I, I email them the manuscripts. We go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then by the time I moved to Colorado, then they would send me the physical manuscript, which was neat. So I could go through it, make changes, add things. Um, we sent that back and forth a few times, and then it was published uh, a year ago, June, I think. It was it was supposed to be earlier, but there were some problems. You know, there's always some problems with things like that. But um, they were very. I really liked working with them. And as they said, you know, it's a it's a tough market for fitness books right now. There's so many of them, and the whole you know challenge with paperback and digital. Mine's available on digital too, but you know, taking something uh, unique. And the nice thing about I'm fortunate with my platform, with my videos and, and social media is that I, I, can, I can reach quite a few people advertising the book. So they, they like that too. And it's been selling very well. It's very consistently selling, which is good. It didn't sell a lot and then just drop off because the videos are out there and I'm constantly making new content where I mention the book. That definitely helps. So you've got – if you go to the books page on SeanVeagFitness.com, you'll see – I love this – uh, SVF 365, <laughs> oh, the, the 30 new day fitness yeah. program, but you've also got the Pilates for athletes, 30 days of yoga, and a, and a handful of others. Yeah. Um, how did those fit into the journey? Well, those are ebooks, and I tell you, man, ebooks, they're like doing workout videos. You don't have to go through anybody. You have an idea, and uh, you, know, you, you write it right on your computer. You self publish to Amazon or iTunes. And again, I have to credit, um, he'll probably listen to this, my friend Stefan. You know, he was, I think he was the one, because he follows all these things. I don't. Now I do, but I didn't know about podcasts. I didn't know much about that or ebooks. And he does the research. He's like, hey, you should look at this. And, you know, ebooks are a great way to instantaneously get your stuff out there. I mean, once the manuscript's done, you publish it within a few minutes, and the next day it's, it's there. You know, it's, it's on the market, it's getting in the search engines, people are kicking it around. And it's another, as I tell people, I'm like, look, you have the videos, you know, you have the app, you have my online train program, all these things. Here's a book, you know, add the book to your arsenal. Um, the costs are low and I take the photos myself for the books. I set up my tripod, I have a timer and I, I take all these photos and I add the graphics. Um, and it's, you know, in my own time, I have a couple books right now in the works. I think you should always you know, have a book in the work and I, in the works. And I'm always uh, try, working on becoming a better writer too, where I'd like to go off into more of a, maybe a, a book about 10 things that I, like we talked about, 10 things I do every day, or I recommend you do every day for optimal health and fitness, things like that. I'd love to see something like that. And I've already mentioned a couple of things, you know, outside of the fitness, but that are great contributors toward, to use the word you've brought up a couple of times, lifestyle and just yeah. general well-being, and they're, they're all great things. Interesting to me, I mean, as I mentioned, I've got a broadcasting background and have worked mm -hmm. largely in the marketing side of it the last uh, many years, but to see how you can have so many other things that people can go and, and buy and access, uh, but that how powerful marketing can be by helping people as opposed to trying to sell to people. So, I mean, yeah. you could you could have an immeasurable amount of people benefit from accessing seanvigfitness.com or just watching the YouTube videos without ever spending a single cent on any of your products. Mm -hmm. And yet, what a wonderful way to be able to build a relationship like we talked about with the energy coming together. Now you've, you've built that trust 
um, that people then can go and say, well, now I can get a little bit more of a specialized, I can get the ebook, or I can upgrade the app yeah. or any of these kinds of things. But it's really interesting for me to be able to see how that's become so powerful of, hey, you know, I'm going to help you along. And if we build that trust, then there's going to be a lot of loyalty and enthusiasm there to kind of make that, you know, sticky is a word I hear a lot, that um, that, yeah. that relationship is going to be cemented and uh and you're going to build a loyal following. How fair is that as a way to kind of describe what's happened to you? Well, that's spot on because you want uh, people to be comfortable with you. You know, and I'm not a perfect fit for everybody. You know, none of us are. People, and we all, you know, go on YouTube, there's thousands of videos, workout videos, so you can pick and choose. If, if once in a while if someone says they don't care for my videos, I, I thank them and say, well, go watch somebody else, you know. <laughs> um, but the... Uh, yeah, it's the trust issue, uh, and you know, I in this business, you know, you offer a lot of free stuff, and then you all, maybe you offer things that cost money too. It all goes together. It gives the consumer the choice of how far they want to go with you. Uh, and I always, you know, I'll put a plug in for my books into the videos, um, different ways that they can take me anywhere they want. It's a very mobile society, so your iPad, iPhone, Android, whatever, um, take the book with, take this with. Um, surround yourself with what I do because if if anything, I, I I create a lot of content. You know, I'm very big on content, on giving people a lot of stuff, a lot of choices. Sometimes it could be confusing, so I try to trim it down. You know, into cohesive programs and uh, things like that. Like do this for that, but um, you know, you build the trust. You, you can't launch everything at once if nobody knows who you are, and nobody's watching your videos. Because they they want the name recognition, they you know let's let's work out together. I know Sean, I, I trust him, and I like working out with him. There's a part that that I skipped over that I'm curious about. Where when you were teaching for a decade or so, and then you started making the videos, it sounds like there was a little bit of overlap in those two eras, if I heard you correctly. Um, but either way, um, what was the process like, Sean? And to be more specific. Was there a moment where you decided, I'm just going to go the content creation route and take this online? Or was that more of an organic evolution? Uh, well, it's at first, it's, you know, YouTube is the place. You know, YouTube is the, the big anchor right there as far as if you're going to do videos, you got to put them on YouTube first of all. That's where you start. I mean, the, YouTube is a nucleus of my brand. You know, it's always spinning away. I like to think of it as like a stock you would buy, a dividend-paying stock that even while you sleep, it's generating. It's generating views, interest. People are checking out your website and such from that. Um, but, you know, it, may, it sounds weird, I guess, but I love doing the videos. Like I, I can't stop myself from filming. Even some days I'm like, I probably won't film today. I'm like, you know what, maybe I'll go out and film. You know, I'll go hike somewhere and film or do this. So, um for me, it was about just I, I loaded up on content, and that is always good to have because you have all these great ideas, but you have nothing to back to put in there to back it up with. You can't go anywhere with it. So I didn't think too much about it. I started filming, and I had a, a different YouTube channel to start with, and then I launched Motley Fitness, which is kind of a weird name. <laughs> and then eventually, I'm like, let's go with Sean V Fitness because it's basically me. Motley Fitness makes it sound like some kind of conglomeration, a bunch of people. It's like, no, it's just me. And, um, yeah, making videos is still like the high point, I think, of the brand. So is it fair to say then or, or true that you started putting videos on YouTube while you were still teaching? Oh, yeah. I never stopped teaching. I, you know, while I was in Florida, I taught a lot more. In Colorado, I'm teaching a little bit less. One, because we live pretty far up, so it's kind of a drive to go down into town. It's like at least a half hour. Um, but I never stopped teaching because it's kind of like what – it was fun to try out things in the classes that you wanted to add to the videos. Let's try it out here, this new move or this sequence and see what they think. And then when you film it, it's great because you have that um, reference point and you can also talk about, well, I did this with my class over at Disney, you know, a couple days ago and they were groaning and, you know, I think they loved it, but they were groaning and scowling at me. So let's see how you do. So it's very, you know, real, it's very fresh. It's very, I'm not really going off a, a really uh, strict script most of the time. So you try out in the classes and then throw them into the videos. And then from there, it sounds as if it has been a pretty organic process of generating content where the YouTube stuff started to pick up momentum 
uh, mm-hmm. that you described uh, not all that long ago. The the book process led leads to the ebooks, led to the app, which you you talked about. Um, the blog you contribute to fairly regularly. Um, it seems like it's got its own sort of sense of inertia to at least at this point keep you discovering new things. It does. It does, and I. Um... As I said, you know, I, I keep it genuine, and it's it's me. I, I don't have. I know a lot of my my YouTube fitness friends. They have they hire people like to answer emails and and um, do things, do publicity for them. I really don't do that. I do it all myself. But you know, once you get a certain amount up there, you can make it work for you, which is great. You can go on vacation for a week. You can do certain things, and things are working. Like the app is generating generating my online training program, my YouTube videos, my books, um, all these things. You know, keep keep moving along. You can kind of step away from them because it's a, uh, it's tricky. It's tricky when it's your brand and it's your face and your name that it's tricky to separate yourself from it. If I went, you know, I, I used to work at Chuck E. Cheese when I was in high school, and when I left there, I I didn't think about Chuck E. Cheese. You know, I made pizzas while I was there, and I went home. But when it's your brand, it's it's all you. It comes out of your mind and your heart, and uh, you you make all the decisions for it. You're all every day. You have all these choices. You have a hundred options in front of you of what you can do, and it can be overwhelming. But I've gotten very good at focusing on like one or two projects at a time. You just do that one or two projects at a time because if not, you'll drive yourself crazy. Well, and then that happens along, or it would be a similar process to when we talked about the big things that maybe flare up in your life. It's amazing how that applies toward the good stuff too, right, Sean, that, or a big project that it's enormous right now, but you mm-hmm. digest it and then you, you know, you put it out and then before long, it's part of the canon. <laughs> yeah. And you, you, you've, you've absorbed that and you're on to the next thing. I know you have to remember to celebrate these things. Like I just did two seven day challenges on my YouTube channel. I did a yoga one and a Pilates one. A lot of fun to do and they've been very popular, but they're also, you know, they're a lot of work you know, planning, filming, editing. It's many, many, many hours. And that's fine. I chose to do this. That's what I want to do. But you have to make sure you take some time and say, I'm going to, you know, take a little step back and just relax. I'm going to celebrate this. That's why I read so much. That's why I love going for walks. I do a a couple other businesses on the side. I do other things too. But this is, you know, this is my main thing. It has my name on it. But you got to take that time to celebrate it. Because I've done that before. You work so hard, boom, you finish it. And then you don't even look back and you just start working on something else and like, well, I don't want to spend my whole life doing this because where's the, you know, where's the joy? Where's the balance if I'm just pounding my head 24 seven? Yeah. I'm curious before we wrap up, Sean, about this cycle that seems to be, um, seems to have repeated a little bit where theater, dance, singing, then led to teaching then more onto the things that we've just described over the last 15 minutes or so. How mm-hmm. do you perceive that you're feeling now from about seven years into starting the videos and you've developed some new products about maybe what is within the next half decade or 10 years or so that you haven't experienced that you'd like to or you know, mixed with how satisfied it sounds like you are with with things the way that they are now versus what you might like to explore coming into the future? Yeah, that's, you know, I, I'm a day-to-day kind of guy. Um, it's always a tough question. You talk about, like, what's your bucket list or what do, you, what do you want for the future? And the first thing is always to be really excited about what I'm doing, to be passionate about it. Because without that, I'm miserable. I really am. I, 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 I don't like the lows, you know, when you eh, – and, and it happens. I think it's a part of our makeup. It's hard to avoid those. But, you know, I, I do love fitness. I've pulled back a little bit, I think, the last year. Not in like work output, but as we talk about focusing, where I focus on maybe one or two things instead of trying to do everything at once, which would drive me crazy. Staying up late, working, doing these kind of things that always kind of pulled at me. You know, they pulled my focus. Um, as far as in the fitness industry, I love, you know, as I said, it's set up where I can keep expanding. And from day to day, I mean... Uh, as far as emails I get too, it's, it's direct a lot by that businesses that contact me or, um, publishers, things like that, that direct, I'm like, okay, here's a whole new, here's a whole new, um, project to work on. And I always make sure I, I use the word balance. We use it in videos, but balance my own life that I don't, you know, as I said, wreck myself 
over overworking on this brand that I do other things as well. I have a healthy balance of doing, you know, shutting it off at night. Um, just about every night, uh, <laughs> I like to turn everything. I, mean, I turn the computer and phone off pretty early now, and I, I like to put on a Star Trek episode, Next Generation. Do you ever watch Next Generation? I haven't. I've only, as far as Star Trek goes, uh, seen the the newer movies. I don't know why. It's not from dislike. It's just never. Uh... It never really absorbed itself into me, at least not yet. Why? That's something that uh, sounds like brings you a lot of enjoyment. Well, you know, I was, I'm was i a Star Wars guy. The first movie I ever saw in the theater. You probably did, too. I mean, we're the same oh, age. Oh, yeah. Yep. 1977. It was like, oh, Star Wars. You know, it was all about – Star Wars actually is what got me into more of the arts, like movies and filmmaking and stuff. But there's something about Star Trek. I didn't really watch much of it, but I get the you know seasons at the library – and I love just lying on the floor in my in my den, and I do stretches at night. Not my den, my loft. And I, I put on a Star Trek episode. There's something about that show that I find so relaxing and stimulating at the same time. Hmm. And it's a great way. I watch that. Then I go downstairs, and I lay in bed. I usually read for about an hour. And it's a great way to just transition into sleep. So the next day, you wake up pretty energized. So it's it's all in the name of balance. And, you know, I, you talk about classical music. There's the things that bring me such great joy, and I want to share those with people who work out with me, who train with me. Um, I, don't want to, I don't like getting too personal about my life. You know, a lot of people film every moment of their day. I would never do that. But I do like to share my passions and things that really inspire me um, in life, inspire me to do more in life, to be more creative, and to serve people better. That's why we talk about classical music or opera. Or you know, mystery science theater three thousand things that really, really energize me. What 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 kind of classical music are you listening to? Mozart. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I uh, and, and there have been a number of Tchaikovsky. Um, mm-hmm. It never would have occurred to me to do that um, in, until I, I heard you say that. And I've I've <laughs> since kind of gone on to oh, another uh, fellow from another part of the world that, that was kind enough to spend some time on this podcast a couple episodes ago, Sean, a fellow by the name of Jason Stevenson. He's in Australia. Uh, he has a great site called Relax Me Online and like you has an enormous and very loyal following of which I'm a part uh, on YouTube with guided meditations and things that he does. And he also collaborates with other people that create music. Uh, some of them are on uh, you know binaural beats or I need like is the word solfeggio. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Frequencies, so, uh huh. Uh, and I'll I'll get that almost like sort of a drone sound, but but musical. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'll put that in my my earbuds um, when I'm at my desk at work or when I'm working away at home, uh, or I'll put Mozart on as you suggested. And it literally it does change your physiology. It helps oh. you focus in and settles yeah. your breathing down. And amazing how that happens. It, it really does. Well, you know, scientists do all these sorts of studies about the power of Mozart and Bach and Schubert and stuff just for babies' minds, you know, constructing minds. But, you know, when I work, you know, edit videos or write, I always put on either classical or jazz. I love either of those without words usually. And it's just, it's such a great – I always say music is one of those things that picks you up and kicks your butt out the door to go do something a lot. Like put on some music. I mean uh, – who doesn't, you know, when they work out, doesn't want to have great music on? It's really difficult to work out without music. And sometimes in my videos, I'm like, oh, this is tough because it's so quiet out here. Yeah, all I hear is birds chirping. It's not doing it for me. I need something a little more exciting. But as I said, I want to share these things with people. Um, real quick, I know we're wrapping up. I, I mentioned in a couple of videos, uh, my wife, for my birthday last month, we went and saw the opera Tosca. It's by Puccini, this classic Italian opera up in Central City, Central City, Colorado. And the opera was so powerful. I've, I've seen it before on DVD and I've sung stuff from it. It's so powerful. And, you know, it, when I'm watching it, I'm so excited. You know, it, as you say, it informs everything. It's so powerful and so dramatic and so beautiful. It's like I'm going to take this energy. I'm going to put it into my brand. So I, I talked about it in a couple of my videos. I'm like, you know, it was just tremendous. I, I would highly recommend you watch that opera. You know, so as I say, I want to share my passions with the with the people who are watching. Well, it works. You know, when you think about what each of us as individuals we can do with, you know, you can only do what you can with what you have today and the people that are around you and starting with yourself, right, Sean? Like, I, mm-hmm. you know, we mentioned a number of things over the course of this conversation, um, limiting our exposure to what we see online or anywhere else, because I think that then comes back to a choice. Or you talked about 
choosing how you want to react or how to respond, um, just getting started and, and letting things evolve. But, um, you know, for me to even just be sitting here having this conversation with you, you know, you affected and inspired me. On the other hand, I was looking to be, you know, what the old story of, um, you know, when the student is ready, the teacher appears and things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm healthier and am happier. And anybody that's around me gets to benefit at some level, I guess, from that. Yeah. And we all reach um, out. You know, uh, yeah. I have all the people or as I said, that that get me going because we don't just get it on our own a lot. We have to have that constant stimulation. Um, it's very true. So and I hopefully we'll get the chance to talk again at some point because I'd love to talk e- even a little bit more directly about some of the different disciplines. Why would you look to maybe Pilates as opposed to yoga as opposed to this mm-hmm. or as opposed to that? Well, I can uh, talk but, that for hours. Well, and, and, and I look forward to doing that. Uh, for those that are listening, Sean and I talked before this conversation about that. I very specifically had said, you know, there's so much great content available at SeanVeagFitness.com and on the YouTube channel and in the eBooks and the app uh, that I encourage you, if you haven't already, to be able to go and, and, and start there because you're going to educate yourself doesn't mean that we can't come back to this. But for the meantime, I wanted to have this discussion, Sean, for A, people that didn't know who Sean Vig was, and B, people like me that do, but wanted to hear more about your journey. And you've been uh, been wonderful um, with, with that. And uh, I hope people have enjoyed it because it's it's a really been an honor and uh, a great privilege to talk to you. And I'm, I'm very grateful for your time. Thank you. Oh. Me too, Kevin. Thank you. I this you get we get started on this stuff. We could talk for hours. I love being able to share it and and to hear your insights into it as well. You can get a hold of Sean online at SeanVeigFitness.com. Again, Sean is spelled S-E-A-N, and Vig is V-I-G-U-E. On Twitter, he is at Sean Vig Fit. You can find his Facebook fan page. Facebook.com slash Sean Vig and his powerhouse YouTube channel is YouTube.com slash Motley Fitness. Go look Sean up and give him a shout. I'm sure he would love to hear from you. I'd like to hear from you too. Slide by no schedule That's the main hub for all things that I'm up to, though I encourage you to have a look at my personal development journey site as well. Choose hope, live better.com and my rock band bucket list project, Mutineer Band. Please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, rate it and review it if you care to, or leave a comment on the YouTube feed, youtube.com slash no schedule man. Thanks again for listening. We'll catch you next time on the No Schedule Man podcast. Just a little deja vu.